Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can extract network related data from a memory capture with Volatility 3. But first, let's talk about some of the plugins we would have previously used in Volatility 2 to accomplish this task. You'll notice we're looking at the official Volatility Command Reference page, and if we scroll down under the table of contents, we'll find a section called Networking with several plugins listed underneath it. Let's click on the Networking section header and talk about what we have. In the Windows XP days, there were four plugins that we would use to profile network-related activity from a memory image. And those plugins were Connections, ConScan, Sockets, and finally SockScan. But starting with Windows Vista and later, we got a new plugin that aggregated all of that output into one, and that plugin was called NetScan. NetScan is still around in Volatility 3, and using it is trivial. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to fire up Volatility 3 and point it at a memory sample using the NetScan plugin. We'll briefly take a look at the results, and then we'll repeat the same command, but this time write the NetScan output to a file. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, I want to show you a script called a Bebus. Abibus is a Python 3 utility that I wrote a while back and recently updated, and it will take a file or files as input. From that data, it will extract any valid IPv4 addresses, ignoring RFC 1918 private ranges. It will also ignore what I like to call CSI cyber IP addresses, which are formatted like real IP addresses, but maybe something like 356.390.4.1 or something silly like that. What it'll be left with are valid publicly routable IPv4 addresses, which it will then send to ipinfo.io, which is a GeoIP lookup service. As it queries that service, it will obtain the JSON data and then format it in a nice table. You can even use a Bebus to write it to a CSV file, which you can then analyze with Timeline Explorer or Excel. But I think the key takeaway I want to show you is just how easy it is to extract this kind of data from a memory sample and within seconds obtain GeoIP information, which can come in very handy when you're analyzing certain memory samples with, say, malware present. So let's get started. If you've used volatility in the past, this part is a piece of cake. All we're going to do is run vol.py, point at a Windows 10 memory image that I happen to have, we don't need to specify a profile because this is volatility three, which is awesome. And then we'll just specify the windows.netscan plugin name. And that's it. So let's do it. So vol.py dash F, the memdump.mem file is located in my home folder. And then we'll type windows.netscan. And there we go. I'll go ahead and press enter. And I am going to speed this section up because it does end up taking a couple of minutes to be able to parse all of the network artifacts from this particular memory image. So instead of making you sit there and wait, we will skip ahead. And through the magic of some editing, you can see that it has completed. There's quite a bit of data here. So what we're going to need to do is scroll up to the top and find the column header so we can determine exactly what information is being displayed to us. You can see that column header right here. The leftmost column is offset, then protocol, local address, local port, foreign address, foreign port, so on and so forth. But the foreign address is going to be especially interesting to us because that's where we'll find our publicly routable internet facing addresses for which we would like to obtain additional info. So let's repeat that command, but this time you'll notice I typed greater than out. So what does that do? Well, the greater than will redirect the standard output of this volatility plugin into a file, in this case, a file called out. There's certainly nothing magic about the name out. I just randomly chose that. Now, let me first mention that this is actually a pretty common thing to do when you're running multiple volatility plugins. For example, you might run pslist and write the output to pslist.txt, psscan to psscan.txt, and so on and so forth. The reason for this is because you can then slice and dice and grep through that text file as many times as you would like in a super fast manner, as opposed to having to rerun the volatility command and wait for volatility to reanalyze the memory image and parse out that data. So again, a pretty common thing to do. 
In our case though, the reason why we're doing this with NetScan will be because we want to use a Bebus and point that utility to the text file and tell it to extract all of those publicly routable IPv4 addresses. So let's go ahead and speed this up just like we did before so we have our output. And as you can see, we've been returned to the prompt, so it looks like it finished running. Let's go ahead and take a look at the out file and see if we have any data inside of it. So we'll clear the screen, do a directory listing, and as you can see, it's about 16K in size, and if we run head against it, yep, looks like we have valid data. So now it's time to take a look at a Bebus. I already have a Bebus installed within this WSL2 environment, but let me show you how you would grab it from the official GitHub repo. This is the official GitHub repo for a Bebus. As of this recording, it was recently updated to major version 2 and does now require Python 3. I already have a Bebus downloaded and ready to go within our WSL2 environment, so no need to perform a git clone or otherwise download it. If you take a look at the readme, you'll see a brief explanation of what the utility does and how to use the various options, but it's all pretty self-explanatory and you're about to see it live anyway. I do also want to point out that if you look at the releases section on the right side, I do provide a 64-bit ELF binary and a 64-bit Windows executable. They're already pre-compiled for you. I created both of these using Pi Installer, and just a warning, I have seen some AV falsely report these as malicious. I assure you, they are not malicious. But you know what? I would just recommend using the Python code anyway. I just provide this as a benefit or convenience to some who may be looking for a ready-to-go executable because they don't have Python installed and ready to go on the machine on which they're running it. All right, so let's switch back over to Windows Terminal and take a look at how we can parse this data. Okay, as I mentioned, Abibus is already downloaded and ready to go on this machine. I've placed it within Tools Miscellaneous under my user's home directory. I'm going to run the tool with dash H for help and show you two options that may come in handy. The first is dash W, which can be used to specify a file to which you would like Abibus to write the output in CSV format as opposed to displaying it on screen. The second, dash A, can be used to specify an API token. Abibus uses ipinfo.io to provide GeoIP data. As of this recording, the service provides you with 50,000 API requests per month, which is probably all you'll ever need. However, if you've purchased a plan from ipinfo.io for an even larger number of requests, you can specify it here. So let's repeat the last command, get rid of dash H and run a Bebus against the out file that we created with volatility as we ran the NetScan plugin. As I press enter, you'll notice the progress being displayed in real time. This was something I recently added in version two. Let's zoom out so all this data fits on screen. And here we have our final results. I think you'll agree that the tool displays the information in a nice, easy to read table format. Let's take a look at the various columns. On the leftmost side, we have the IP address, the host name, which may be available via reverse DNS, the country, region, and city, the postal code, if applicable, the latitude and longitude, the autonomous system number, which can come in quite handy, and finally, the count showing the number of times that IP address appeared within the provided data set. Notice the output is sorted from highest to lowest. Of course, we could take a screenshot of this output or redirect it to a file, but even better, we could, as I previously mentioned, write this out to a CSV file, which we could then further manipulate in Excel. So let's repeat the last command and add a dash W, and I'm going to provide the path to my user's desktop and save the results into a file called out.csv. When this is complete, if we minimize the window, we should see that file on the desktop. I'll go ahead and double click on it to open it with Excel, and there we have our data. Let's resize the columns to fit. And at this point, we can augment the data with additional information, resort it, hide columns, or otherwise manipulate this information in any way we see fit. This will be quite handy, for example, in a forensic report or for other documentation purposes. So I hope you can see the potential use cases for Abibus. Maybe it's something you'll find useful in your investigations. Of course, fair warning, you are sending the IP addresses to a third-party service 
for the purposes of obtaining the GOIP information. So keep that in mind from an OPSEC perspective. Okay, so let's recap. We've used Volatility 3 along with a NetScan plugin to extract network-related data from a Windows 10 memory image. We've then written that output to a file and then used a BBUS to point to that file and extract the publicly routable IP addresses from within. Those IP addresses are then sent to ipinfo.io for the purposes of obtaining GeoIP information for each. The results are returned in JSON format and either displayed on screen or written to a CSV file. And that's it. Well guys, I'm going to leave it here for this episode, but I hope you found this information useful. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.